Is there not gonna be any need for a flight instructor anymore? It's easier to learn the right way first rather than it is to unlearn the wrong way second. As a flight instructor, can you explain to me the importance of weight and balance on my airplane? Weight and balance are crucial because they affect the aircraft's performance, stability, and safety. If the plane is overloaded or the center of gravity is too far forward or aft, it can become Cessna 172 SP to control. Single flight rolling in a flight situation can be extended to increases in air, tension, air rating, weight, and commercial flights, and third build out airline transfers. I'm done. Hey aviators and air nerds, I'm Ty Jones. Welcome back to my channel to view this video that I did not want to make. Why? Because advancing technology has forced me to recognize AI. You can literally learn in a more efficient, comprehensive way that best suits you to learn anything, even flying an airplane. So the reason why I didn't really want to make this video is because what about us flight instructors? Like, are we gonna be, is there not gonna be any need for a flight instructor anymore? Now, before everybody makes the comments below, I'm going to play both sides. So I'm gonna play the one side where I think flight instructors are a waste of time and a waste of money when I can just get the same information from AI. And then I'm gonna play the other side that Yes, there is some flaws in AI and flight instructors are needed. I mean, regardless, you're going to need a flight instructor anyway because you're going to need a flight instructor to actually fly with you in the airplane to get you signed off for the check card and, and all that good stuff, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you can't just blow up a doll next to you and have the AI fly the airplane for you and demonstrate steep turns and do short field landings and power off 180s or whatever the case may be. So let's get started. So many, if not all pilots have been taught in some form or another by a human pilot, whether if it's in person, uh, YouTube video, uh, in a classroom, Instachat, Facegram, you name it. Now recently, virtual reality or VR started to be incorporated into flight training when Oculus Rift and HDC came out with, with all their headsets. Now you can literally game or fly in flight simulators and learn that way and completely immerse yourself in the environment while navigating in the cockpit, learning your aircraft that you're gonna be flying without paying hundreds of dollars per hour to fly in it. So is there a need for flight instructors to do ground courses anymore? Before you comment below, like I said, I'm gonna play both sides here. Side number one, I'm gonna agree that flight instructors are a waste of time, waste of money, not all instructors teach it. And by the way, not all flight instructors teach the same way anyway. You can have one horrible instructor that charters a fortune that you don't learn anything from. In fact, the worst case, you get negative learning from that. And then you get another instructor that really appreciates their job. Um, you don't have a lot of money, don't worry about it. Just pay me whatever you got and I'm gonna, and you're gonna learn the most from that instructor that's most passionate about teaching. So there's two different instructors there. Point being, you never know if the flight instructor you get at your flight school is skilled at teaching you what you need to know to be a great pilot or is just another one of those flight instructors that are there to log free hours in their logbook just enough to get their ATP requirement, and then they're off to the airlines, and then you never hear from them again. So I'm gonna play the one side where I'm a pilot that doesn't have a lot of money, and I wanna use AI. I'm not gonna risk myself put in my position, put, to put myself in a position where I'm gonna pay all my money to a flight instructor. Again, I don't know if they're gonna be good or bad, um, because I don't know them even though they are a certified flight instructor, certified doesn't mean nothing these days. There are certified electricians that will burn your house down. There are certified doctors that'll give you the wrong medication. There are certified managers and CEOs that know absolutely nothing about their company or employees, and yet they're being put in that position anyway because they are certified or they have the degree. So certification these days don't mean nothing. What I'm gonna do today is to prove that I can get the best level of learning comprehension that incorporates all of RUAC and I'll explain what that is in a minute. For everything that I need to know about learning how to become a pilot, everything from regulations, limitations, aerodynamics, even the subjects that I don't even know what to know. Like, I don't even know what questions to ask, so will AI help me ask the questions that I need to ask? 
Um, but before I start, to explain RUAC, RUAC is literally a four step, at, like a four levels of learning. Um, a flight instructor, if you're a flight instructor, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're studying for a flight instructor, you're gonna know what this is. But RUAC, ROTE, the R is standing for ROTE. So ROTE is like literally the basics of the subject you're learning about. Let's say rudder. You know what a rudder is. You know what it looks like. You know it's at the back of the airplane. That's very rote, basic foundation of, of what you need what you need to know about that subject. Then you step up to the U, which is understanding. You know, the rudder actually helps the aircraft yaw. So, okay, now I understand what it does. I know what it is, where it's located on the aircraft. Now I need to apply what that is. So when your aircraft is turning, you need to be a little bit coordinated to keep that ball in the center, you know, step on the ball. So I'm gonna use my rudder because I understand that I need to, that it controls the yaw. So now when your flight instructor, so that is the third step of, of, uh, of RUAC, the understanding. The fourth is, co uh, is correlation. So if your flight instructor tells you to um, um, teaches about P factor, for example, you know, when they tell you more right rudder when you're going off the runner because of P factor, all the left turning tendencies, you're going to know based off of what you understand from what the rudder does, you're going to automatically push in that little bit more right rudder to keep the aircraft down the center line because you correlated from what you understood about the rudder. So that's RUAC in a nutshell. So now with all that being said, let's jump into ChatGPT. Now this is the paid version of ChatGPT. Um, if you wanna know inf more information about it, put it in the comments below. If you want me to ask questions for you, put them in the comments and I'll answer them for you. So uh, let's jump into it and see what it says. If you're my flight instructor, I want you to give me a better solution on how I can find my VFR charts online. Is there a website I can use? As your flight instructor, I recommend using a few reliable websites to access VFR charts online. One, skyvector, skyvector.com. This is one of the most popular resources for pilots. You can view VFR sectional charts, plan flights, and access airport information. It's user-friendly and free. Two, FAA's Digital Aeronautical Chart User's Guide to FAA.gov. You can download official VFR sectionals directly from the FAA. They have an interactive chart viewer where you can find all US charts. Three, fourflight.fourflight.com. This is a paid app, but it's highly recommended for pilots. It provides real-time VFR charts along with- Now I'm gonna stop right there. Now you mentioned Sky Vector, which is the very first uh, recommendation that this AI did, and I was shocked <laughs> because that was the very first thing. Uh, that I was gonna recommend Sky Vector. So very good, good job, good job. Okay, now I'm going to ask it what the minimums are on the localizer for 3.5 center in DFW. What I've done is I went to Sky Vector and I have uh, screenshotted the approach play for the localizer. I left local localizer 3.5 center into DFW, pasted it here, and now I'm going to ask it, what are the minimums for the localizer three five center now let's see if it says a thousand feet the minimums for the localizer wow it says it right there so yeah all of them one thousand one thousand feet so very very nice i'm very impressed let me know if you need any more information or specific detail uh, uh, from this chart. <laughs> that is in, that is in freaking insane. I'm a student pilot and I'm having trouble with my radio communications to air traffic controllers. Can you act as an air traffic controller while I'm a pilot inbound to land? Of course. We can go through the entire process step by step and I'll act as the air traffic controller. You can start as a pilot inbound to land and I'll respond accordingly. Feel free to begin when you're ready. I'm ready. Go ahead and call the tower when you're ready. Tower Cessna 1234 is 10 miles from the northeast, inbound with information Charlie. Tower, Cessna 1234 Tower, enter left downwind for runway 27. Report when you're midfield. Let me stop right there. First of all, if I'm coming in from the northeast, I'm not gonna be on a left downwind for, run for runway 27. First of all, and another thing, they don't say runway 27, it's 27. It doesn't make really make any sense to come in on a left downwind for runway 27. Now, I can see if I'm, if runway, let's say runway niner, 
I can come in on a left downwind from runway nine and circle around and come back and land runway nine. That makes sense. But a left downwind from for runway two seven coming from the northeast. Another thing about this AI thing, which is great if you're an auditory learner. However, if you're a visual learner, this is not going to be much. I mean, this is pretty much what you're looking at. Um, I'm going to ask it, for example, let me unpause it here. What does the color red look like? You're very welcome. I'm always here if you want to chat or need help with anything else. This another, Safe line. This is another issue we're having. What does the color red look like? The color red typically looks bold, vibrant, and intense. It's associated with things like fire, stop signs, and strawberries. It often gives off a feeling of warmth or urgency. Does that help, or are you asking in a specific context? So I'll pause it right there. So, I mean, it's really great, but as I was saying, um, this is a great for an aid, but if you're a visual learner, not so much. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the other side where I agree that flight instructors are still mandatory and that AI, although it is a very powerful tool, it is very useful to use as a training aid, meaning aid because as you've seen, there are flaws. Now, with that being said, flaws, that should actually kind of worry you because you don't want your primary teaching platform to have flaws in it and then take that flawed information and jump in an airplane to go fly with flawed information. Uh, so I'll just leave you with that. Here, I'll make this point. Do you really want a 1600 pound airplane to be flying over the roof of your house being flown by a pilot that has been taught by a human or a robot i'll ask it another way would you rather have an airplane fly, a 1600 pound airplane flying over your house being taught by uh, being taught by being flown by a human being taught by a robot or a human I'll ask both of those ways. Put your answers in the comments. What would you rather have? I mean, there are so many advantages that AI can aid in the flight training. It is extremely useful in learning new things and open up so many doors to education. However, there are some limitations that these, some of these answers can go against FAA regulations or updated FAA regulations and not truly explaining a certain subject correctly. Another thing I wanna hit home is it's so easier to learn it right the first time. In other words, if you learn from the chat GPT or learn from AI that can be flawed and you can get a lot of great information from it. However, when you go to your flight instructor to get signed off or to get, um, you know, do the steep turns and everything like that, there's going to be a lot of negative learning from the AI. There could be a potential negative learning from the AI that you may have to unlearn uh, from your flight instructor, from the human being. So, I wanna hit this home. It's easier to learn the right way first rather than it is to unlearn the wrong way second. So, learn the right way first from a human, from your flight instructor. Use the AI as an aid, which is a great, powerful tool, can help you immensely, but use it as an aid. AI should not be the only place to get all of your answers. You should have multiple resources on the subject that you are learning about, just like I mentioned in my Private Pilot to Airlines video. Like I said, AI is a very powerful tool, and I think it is just the beginning of something that may be very beneficial to aviation, if used the right way. For example, check out this video uh, from AI. I think it's like an AI flight instructor app. This is actually pretty cool. You're still dreaming about becoming an airline pilot and you're still feeling that pain when you pay thousands and thousands of dollars to your flight school? Let me show you Master Pilot. Master Pilot is a tool that runs on your iPad and on your iPhone. And it's kind of like an AI flight instructor in your pocket. This is it insane. Flights, automatically detects every maneuver, grades your maneuver according to the ACS, visualizes it, understands what you're doing, and then gives you feedback on what you're doing and how you can improve. No. So, 
I can understand how some flight instructors can probably hate this because, you know, in some of the feedbacks, some of the flight instructors will say, you know, and that state turn is great, but, you know, you dropped at 50 feet or you dropped below, you know, 100 feet or whatever that was outside of ACS standards. So, you know, I'm going to give you some tips before you even finish. Of course, you get cut off by the student and says, no, I, I wasn't within standards, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So, I don't know, some instructors may not like this or some instructors may like this because they can actually prove the fact that, yes, you were below 100 feet when you did that steep turn. Normally, in a debrief, you sit with your instructor. The instructor would perhaps pull the notes. It's all a bit wishy-washy because it's subjective. You don't have data. Well, look at how it goes with master pilots. Color speed. Purple is excellent. Green is good. Yellow and red are below standard. In 3D, you see how you fly. You see your instruments. We understand what you're doing. And we give this AI module your flight data. And this AI module spits out a description of what you're doing and how do you improve. That is insane. Now, I do think the next generation of pilots will be, you know, as safe as the older generation of pilots that got taught the old fashioned way. I mean, do flight schools still use CRP5s or E6Bs or sectionals or plotters? I mean, <laughs> or is it just, I don't know, uh, Sky Vector, four flight? I don't think yet that there's anything to worry about in terms of safety when using AI as a training aid in flight training, like I said, as long as it's used correctly. But what do you think the future of pilot training will be with AI, especially how fast it's advancing? I'm very interested to know your comments and especially for those who have already experienced uh, AI uh, in their flight training. Put your comments below. I'm Ty Jones, it's time to fly.